Hello, hockey fans. You're listening to Hockey by Northwest, the show where we talk about the only teams you care about, the Vancouver Canucks, Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers, and Winnipeg Jets. I'm your host, Brendan Monroe. Thanks for joining me. Tonight with me is Sean Miller. Good evening, everyone. So we're going to talk about our preseason action across the, uh, across the NHL, across the teams that we care about. Sean, what are your early impressions with, uh, with your Edmonton Oilers? What have you liked? What have you not liked? What uh, has you heartened for the upcoming season? Well, I mean, a few things happened to be hard for the upcoming season. Uh, tonight's game featuring the Evans Oilers and Phoenix Coyotes, I think, was the climax of a pretty good week for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He started uh, subtly with a point in each of his first three games. But to tonight was his coming out party, playing on a line with Taylor Hall and Jordan Eberle. They were spectacular tonight. I think you'll even agree, Brian. They were, they were pretty solid tonight, each with three points up on the board. And some pretty spectacular goals as well. I like that um, move that Taylor Hall. Chance. I like that move Taylor Hall put in, where he chipped the puck just a little bit ahead to himself, and then uh, crashed the net, reminiscent of uh, Glenn Anderson coming off the wing. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins did a pretty easy tap in goal, thanks to uh, Hall's push to the front of the goal. And I think that's what makes uh, uh, Taylor Hall such a dynamic player. It's not necessarily he's the greatest sniper. I think Jordan Everly's the sniper on that line. He's the one with the finesse and the one shot score. Taylor Hall, that dynamic uh, Eric Lindros dynamo. I'm just going to pull my way to the net and force the puck into the net with my will rather than finesse it. I, I think it's a good blend of that line. I think there's a lot of hope for other fans. So who do you on think the they're? Uh, who do you think they're keeping? Who do you think they're going to be cutting? Who do you think they're going to be keeping on the uh, big squad? Of course, you said last week that Ryan Nugent Hopkins Hopkins, Hopkins is going to stay. Uh, he's got a long name, but. Uh, I disagree with you. I'm starting to maybe turn your direction, but who else do you think will make the club? Well, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, um, with uh, Gagne being put on the week-to-week injured reserve list with a high ankle sprain, which could keep out of action for up to a month, um, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is a sure in on the team now. Um, there's absolutely no way they're going to send him down with a centerman going down like that, and an offensive centerman and at that. Um, I think the door is also open now for an Anton Lander to make the team. Um, they were going to need four centermen, so if you're going to hork off, Horkoff, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Belanger, and um, Brule has looked brutal. Um, last night, his last game out, he took three or four minor penalties, all of the, which were the lazy stick up in the waist variety as the guy skated by. Um, the coaching staff can't like that, especially for guys who didn't really do anything else on the, in the game to speak of other than take penalties. Yeah, I don't get not a good way to get into the score sheet, I, I usually find. I don't get that. Here's a guy who's got every chance of making the team, and he's really not stepped up uh, to the plate on this one. Well, maybe his psyche's a little bit damaged. I know he was having some personal issues last year. I mean, missed quite a number of games from the concussion and a variety of injuries, an illness that kept him on the lineup for more than a month. Um, you know, maybe he needs to change his year. You know, maybe things are just going on in his life, and he needs to take a step back at We'll have to see what happens. He'll have to clear waivers to go down to Oklahoma City. So, you know, he might get that new home and a fresh start sooner than we think. I'm going to change gears here a little bit and talk about some of the other teams around uh, our area of interest that have had interesting preseasons. Vancouver uh, looks like they're gaining more confidence in Cody Hodgson. I think he'll stick with the team this year. He's looked good in preseason so far. Not looking as good in the preseason were reclamation projects in uh, Owen Nolan and uh, Manny Legacy, both players cut by the team this week. And uh, Nolan had said at the outset if he was going to make the team, he'd have to give 110%. Well, obviously he didn't pass his statistics class because if he had, he would have known that his attempt would have been failed from the start as you could not give more than 100%. Um, too much or too late, in the, uh, too late in the career for Owen Nolan to try to make that kind of comeback, you think, Sean? Well, you know what, I don't know if it was necessarily too late in the year. He did uh, look pretty good playing against the Edmonton Oilers a few nights ago. Um, it looked like he had a little bit more of a step than when he'd last been in the league with Toronto and a few other teams. Um, he looked pretty good. I, I don't think the reason he got cut had anything to do with his play. I think it was strictly a numbers game. The Canucks were just looking for bodies to throw the lineup in the preseason. Um, you know, the Sedins have been nowhere to be found. Much like the, the playoffs in the preseason, they've been nowhere to be found. Um... You know, I think Vancouver just wanted some bodies in camp to rest some of their veterans and give them a little more time off to get away from that Stanley Cup like legacy and uh, Owen Nolan. I think we're trying out for other teams, even though they're actually wearing Canucks jerseys. How I mean, really just chance them to be on the ice. How sad was that for Canucks fans that paid good money to go to preseason games? Yes, that's part of your season ticket package, but they had at best two or three veterans in the lineup for any of their given home games. I think that's a ripoff, don't you? 
Well, the Edmonton uh, media was up in arms um, last game out against Vancouver. They felt quite disrespected by the lineup to connect to the chosen dice. I mean, typically most NHL teams go by the eight veteran rule in early preseason games. That means you dress eight regular season veterans from the last year's roster. Well, the Canucks only said one player with any playoff game experience to play against the Oilers. One player. Oreskovich. And he was hardly an important player on that team. So, I mean, how can you be sending a lineup like that to play against another team in the preseason? That just a kind of disrespect to the franchise. And then you're right. A disrespect to your fans who are watching the game going, why is the other team dressing their first overall picks and their top players? And our team doesn't send anybody. Not anyone. I thought it was funny earlier last year when uh, a member of the Vancouver media started talking to Viktor Oreskovich, assuming that he was Russian, and asked him what it was like to come to North America to play hockey. Of course, Viktor Oreskovich, born and raised in Canada. And uh, yeah, way, way to introduce yourself awkwardly to the new member of the team. But yeah, he still feels like the new guy and did not play a whole lot last year. And when you're sending just the one player as a veteran, that, uh, that says about as much you need to know about Vancouver's injury situation going into the start of the season. Let's talk a little bit about Winnipeg and their start to the uh, preseason. Uh, Shifley has been turning heads in Winnipeg, as has uh, Dustin Bufflin with his uh, physical play in the preseason. What are your thoughts, Sean? Well, Shifley's definitely been turning heads. Um, He's looking a little bit more uh, like the steal of this year's draft, I might say. Um, Early returns, obviously, um, preseason. But it means he's got a handful of goals already. He's scored in each of the games he's played in. And the goals he scored have been of the just the Ryan Smith variety where you knock a puck in from two feet. They've been real snipe shots where he's taking control of the puck, taking a moment and put the puck in the net where the goalie couldn't find it. I think that shows a real good poise in that kid. And, you know, poise is an important attribute for a rookie. I mean, when you've got poise, that can make a big difference in a long, long season, right? When the adrenaline starts to wear off. The kids that have that confidence early tend to keep it. Shifley scored some nice goals in the rookie camp out in Penticton. He's kept up the play in the reg- in the preseason, and uh, I think he'll make the Winnipeg Jets this year. And you're right, I think they might have just had the uh, the gem of the first round. Obviously, the, the top pick in Nugent Hopkins was a no-brainer, but then you're kind of scratching your head looking at the board afterwards, and uh, Winnipeg's done well so far. A lot of hockey left to be played in his career, but uh, from the very first few glimpses we've seen of uh, Mr. Shifley, things have been looking good. And uh, speaking of looking good, I like the way that Dustin Bufflin ran over a uh, Colorado, or Columbus Blue Jackets forward in the first three seconds of the first preseason game in Winnipeg. Did you see that, John? Well, that was absolutely great. It was the fact that the storybook starts that franchise's return. I mean, the building was rocking like a playoff game. And, you know, they lose the opening face-off, D to D, and then kaboom, Bufflin runs the guy over in center ice. The fans are going to love that, especially from Dustin Bufflin, who has off-season has been a little bit, uh, a little bit, had gone through some stormy seas, for lack of a better way to put it. Yeah. And then there's Calgary. And uh, Calgary's had some ups and downs in the preseason. I think it's a good reflection of the way they'll play this year. They played very, very well against Vancouver. Vancouver didn't send much of a team, but Calgary looked very sharp. And then they did not look anywhere near as good against Edmonton in their last couple of outings. Um, and, of course, the big concern with Calgary is that Jerome McGinley has uh, a nagging back injury. And, you know, as you get into your 30s, once you have back injuries, you never really know what kind of uh, long-lasting impacts they can have, especially on a player who's a power forward, uses his upper body strength to create scoring chances. Absolutely. I think it's real telling with the Calgary Flames franchise that after losing a home-and-home on the weekend to the Edmonton Oilers, and in a pretty pathetic fashion, um, barely managing any offense whatsoever. Their best player, Sven Barsi, their first-round pick from this year, who looked quite good in both games, I agree. was immediately cut. Right? Was immediately cut. And the players were given a day off. Um, the Oilers, who won both those games, were back at practice first thing the next morning to work on conditioning. But the Calgary Flames franchise didn't think that after losing both games that they needed to be on the ice. That's a pretty weird, weird way... Uh, to be prepared for the regular season. So we'll have to see where that leads for the Calgary franchise. I guess that's how you rebuild your team, right, Jay Feaster? Well, exactly. Let's go play some golf, boys. That was a nice couple losses. Don't worry. Let's go play some golf. I'm concerned about that, because I like the way that Sven Barchi played in the preseason that I did see him play in. Yeah, he looked good. I mean, even the Edmonton media were raving about that guy. There was a couple games where he looked like he was a better player than Ryan Nugent Hopkins. That rookie tournament, he looked great. 
And the reward he got with those efforts was he got cut just in time for the rest of the team to take a couple days off. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting situation in Calgary. I think they're a franchise that just doesn't know quite where they're going yet. And, you know, maybe this is a season where they finally start losing some games and realize that, you know, maybe we got to change the formula this year. And I hope that they do because, you know what, as an Edmonton fan, it's good to have a good team in Calgary. It makes things a lot more interesting throughout the season. It certainly does, and I think that we're going to have a very exciting season coming up. We're only uh, just a couple of days away from the start of the regular season. Hockey fans are, uh, are pumped. They're fired up that their team's going to have a blank slate and uh, start chasing the cup in just a few days. What are, uh, what, are, what are you feeling right now as a hockey fan? I'm just wanting the regular season to get started. I'm done with all the suspensions. I've <laughs> been quite a few, and after watching tonight, there's going to be even more. Um, I think every Philadelphia Flyer in the lineup is just about on suspension or has a hearing scheduled the next few days to burn in Shanahan. Um, that says something with that franchise. They've had 13 suspensions in the last couple of seasons. And none of them even involved Dan Carcillo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dan Carcillo's been a model of a model human being in that <laughs> franchise, and that, I think, also says a lot. Um, you know, just get the season going. Let's get the season going. I think it's a fans all around the league are saying, let's just go. It's time for the games to mean something. Well, except in Toronto. Well, they're too busy playing the parade to be worried about when the games actually start, Brent. <laughs> Remember last year when they won their, their first four or five games at the start of the year? And uh, they, were, they were just about set for the parade right then. Well, you know what? You gave Toronto fans credit. At least they have the face. They're keeping the face. Yes, they are. Well, that's it. Time for hockey season. Yeah, absolutely. Keep bring it on. All right. Sean, we'll talk to you after the season kicks off here. Have a great week. Absolutely. Yeah. Good week, everyone. Hockey fans, thanks for joining us. You've been listening to another episode of Hockey by Northwest. I'm Brendan Monroe. With me tonight with Sean Miller. Have a good one. Keep sticking